I will try a little bit indeed now to connect um, what the, um, well, the new Erasmus Plus and European Solidarity Corps programs, um, how they, maybe what they have to offer in a way, um, and how you can potentially use them for further developing youth work um, in your country, in your environment, in your community. Um, which is not, not maybe such an obvious thing to do. And um, for those of you who have been here, um, last week. Um, you know, we've gone through all the different project formats that the programs offer. Um, I will not do this now, definitely. Um, so I will not repeat what I said last time. Um, I will rather look a bit more broadly um, at, at, at how the programs maybe connect um, to youth work um, development. Um, first of all, um, I would really like to start by connecting to the policy dimension that um, I think Dragan stopped with um, in his presentation. Um, how does the, um, the, the policy frame, in a way, um, how important is the policy frame and how can you use also larger policy developments um, at European level, maybe to connect to, to um, developing youth work um, at national level? Um, and in a way, I think this is what the programs, um, the European youth programs or the EU programs um, try to do very much. Um, they um, really have constructed the new programs, uh, probably more strongly even than the last generation of Erasmus Plus um, to um, the um, political, um, the policy frameworks and seeing the, the program as a tool to support the implementation of the relevant policy frameworks um, in particular, of course, the European youth strategy um, as the main, um, the main policy for the field um, of, of youth and youth work um, in the European Union. And um, the program guide connects very strongly um, to the European youth, um, youth strategy. And in, in that context, um, the program's aim um, I would, I mean, as I understand it, I mean, looking at all of these things, uh, all of the aspects together at um, supporting the development of international youth cooperation projects, um, because it's, in a way it's, it's projects, um, obviously, that the programs support, um, and transnational um, youth cooperation projects in order, um, first of all, to develop young people's competences and skills. Um, I think that's... Um, the very first, uh, the very first aim that the programs have, and to develop their competences and skills, in particular, to cope with the challenges um, and the developments um, in today's um, societies in Europe. Um, so we've already talked about digitalization. We've talked about green youth work. Um, so those things will come back. I will talk about them in a minute. Um, so that's the first, the first aim really. The second one is um, in connection to that to make young people feel being a part of Europe, make young people feel European, make them feel of what connects them to other young people in Europe. So seeing international cooperation in that context. Um, and of course, Europe in the, in the framework of the European youth programs or the EU youth programs is of course, first, of, first and foremost, the European Union. Um, we've been, um, as Salto, we've been working with that aspect for, for, for several years and trying to see what does that mean in particular for the Western Balkan region, which is a region that is in, in the process of accession to the European Union, how quickly or how slowly that goes is another question, but nevertheless, this perspective is there. And um, I think you have these discussions about different influences coming from Europe and from other parts of the world in, in the region um, and, and strongly. And um, so the question is, to what extent is there this notion of being a part of Europe and wanting to be a part of Europe um, in, 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 um, in these countries as well? And what does that mean, especially when we talk about things like European citizenship or issues like that? How do you relate to that? Um, and of course, I mean, in that sense, feeling European, but also taking an active part in the construction of and the further development of Europe, but that can be translated also taking an active part in your society as well as a young person, generally, no matter if in Europe or um, elsewhere in that sense. 
And then um, on a third level only, um, it's about um, bringing back the outcomes of um, international cooperation projects, the outcomes of learning together, learning from each other, sharing good practices and all of this back to the national levels, um, back to the local levels, um, and in order to use them there to develop societies further. And a part of that is also to develop youth work further. So in that sense, I think youth work development is, is a part of a package um, in a way, um, but it's only one aspect of what the, the programs are trying to do. Um, nevertheless, it's also strong, um, it's strongly supported and um, by project formats, but also by tools that are developed in the framework um, of the programs. And um, I've just checked while, while Dragon was speaking, I just checked once more in the program guide just to be sure. But of course, youth work is not defined also in the framework of the programs. Yeah? We're speaking about um, a European program and uh, youth work looks differently in, uh, across Europe, uh, different systems um, of youth work and the different practices of youth work, different understandings of what it is. Um, so what the program does is it defines what a youth activity is and it defines what a youth worker is. But that's as far as it goes. Um, the rest is left open. And that's probably also good in a way. Nevertheless, uh, the program works with very strong priorities and very strong idea of what um, youth activities and international youth, youth activities should do. Um, and um, so it's maybe a question of seeing what, how, what that means also then for the context in which you work. I will share my presentation um, also, um, and um, I will take you through um, these different steps. So I will shortly look at the European policy context, the program priorities um, and frameworks. Um, we will look briefly at the projects, project formats that are supported, but very briefly only, um, to just recall um, a bit what is there. Um, then I will highlight a few resources that are and developments, um, but resources in particular that have been developed at European level, um, maybe just to, to see a little bit how you can use them potentially in your work. Um, you might some know some of them, some of you not. Um, and at the support also that is offered by Salto. So these are the different, different elements. So the European Youth Strategy. Um, Last time we talked a lot about these different keywords, connect, engage, empower, um, which are highlighted throughout the European Youth Strategy. Um, they are um, based on the 11 youth goals that um, have been put together in consultation with young people before the development of um, the strategy. And um, in a way, um, if you look at these youth goals, you will find that they, they form also, they are the, the basis in a way also for the programs. Um, and potentially um, also needs that have been expressed and goals that have been expressed by young people. And um, if you look at the different um, um, priorities of the programs, you will find that horizontally they address some some of these goals. Uh, some of these goals find themselves in a priority like inclusion, which is there, for instance, um, specifically in um, under the youth goal of um, inclusive societies. But of course, it's also addressed by other goals like um, equality of all genders or um, moving rural youth forward, um, space and participation for all. So there are different youth goals. And um, if you take a priority um, of the programs, you will find that often represented in several youth goals. Um, if you're developing a European youth project, um, it's good. It's always good to refer um, to, to this policy context, to the youth goals, to um, these overall aims of to connect, to engage, and to empower. Um, the question is, of course, to what extent um, they are relevant for you and how you connect to them in your context, what relevance they have in, in the context in which you work. The program priorities we have um, highlighted last time already, and I just want to take a, a brief moment um, to, to look at how they are understood in the framework of the programs. Inclusion and diversity is, um, is really a strong priority that's been there for, for a long time in the program. And most of you, I mean, those of you who have ever come across the, the European, um, so Erasmus Plus in the youth field in particular, but also the European Solidarity Corps, um, 
know this priority. Um, it is really a very broad um, definition of inclusion or inclusion target groups that is addressed by the programs. The idea being really to, to better reach out to more participants with fewer opportunities and give them possibilities to engage also at international level or in transnational youth activities, to give them access um, and to give this access to all young people that face any kind of barrier um, because of whatever situation they are in, be that linked to health issues um, or disabilities, be it linked to education um, or to cultural issues, cultural differences, um, social barriers, economic barriers, um, geographical barriers. So you can interpret inclusion really in a, in a very, very broad way, be that because they're living in a rural environment and they don't have access to information, be it because they have difficulties with school and they are not coping with the education system or they're dropping out of school, be it because they are out of work and education um, or because they're facing discrimination due to any, any reason. Um, so it's, um, it's a very broad definition and um, um, the program basically provides support in terms of funding and in terms of resources to um, facilitate access to the programs to, to th this, this target group. Um, interestingly, in, in inclusion and diversity was not on the list of main topics um, that um, Dragon highlighted for now in his presentation in the region. Um, so I don't know to what extent working with inclusion target groups, for instance, is, is um, of relevance um, for youth work development also in, um, or youth activities um, in, um, in the different countries of the region, for instance. We're having a whole session, a whole workshop that will deal with this topic um, next week. No, this week on Thursday. So this here week, we will yeah, look in, more in on today, Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, we will look more in detail into this. And you will see there's a whole inclusion diversity strategy um, that um, outlines the different um, steps and tools um, for how one can work um, uh, to involve um, this target group better in, in, in youth work at different levels. Similarly, um, youth participation is based on a youth participation strategy. Also to this um, um, priority of the programs, we will come back next week. So I will not go into detail into this as well. Uh, suffice to say at this, at this point that um, youth participation in the programs is defined in, also in a broad way, um, understanding it both as youth participation as involvement in decision-making processes, giving youth a voice in these decision-making processes, um, but also as youth participation in a larger way in terms of in a larger sense as civic action, youth activism, uh, young people taking some kind of action with the intention of making a change um, in their community, in their environment, um, and so forth. So a very broad definition. And um, yeah, digitalization is um, contrary to youth participation and inclusion, uh, quite a new priority. It's new, newly um, emphasized to that extent in the programs. Um, of course, the times we're living in, um, well, um, uh, give enough reason to that, I suppose. Uh, it's, uh, we're all working very much, um, we are confronted uh, with issues to do with um, digitalization in society and the need um, to, to understand and to know and to be able to com competently able to work with digital tools. Um, this is what the program is trying to promote as well. There is a policy framework for that as well. And um, it's about developing skills and competences, but it's also about then um, actively taking action, engaging learners, um, to actually use tools and to um, possibly even develop them further. Yeah. Last but not least, environment and the fight against climate change. So what is also called green youth work is another new um, major um, objective um, of the new generation of programs. Also, this is not coming back very much um, in youth work yet, um, at least not explicitly so much. I mean, I'm sure that 
a lot of practices are happening, a lot of um, youth organizations anyway try to adopt green ways of working in a way, but explicitly it's not so much put on the agenda, at least not in, in, in a European environment and also from what I'm understanding, maybe also not so much even in a Balkan context, I don't know, you know better, but so the European Commission puts this on the table. Um, and again, it's about building knowledge and skills and attitudes um, around climate change and sustainable environment. Um, it's about changing behavioral behaviors of people yeah, in terms of consumption habits, lifestyles, um, and so on. Um, it makes support available for sustainable transport modes. Um, and it's um, it really calls for engaging in um, uh, yeah in fields uh, in 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 fields and um, that um, in areas that are that um, are important in order to sustain um, the environment, um, sustainable growth, climate, and so on. And of course, in this context, particular attention is giving to rural development. Um, Dragan already referred to the European Youth Work Agenda, the European Youth Work Agenda um, based on the, um, well, which is now the process following the European Youth Work Convention that took place in November, um, is special in the sense that it brings together the environments of the Council of Europe. Um, and the, um, the, the, the pol policy put forward by the Council of Europe and also the policies put forward by the, in, in the EU context when it comes to youth work development um, and puts that together into a framework for youth work development in Europe according to eight different priority areas. I think what it does, um, well, it's, what it, why it could be important um, also for the Balkans is first of all, of course, contrary to the EU framework, it's, it, it explicitly involves all the countries of the wider Europe. So it's explicitly something you can use in your context. And it also, the idea is also to set in motion a process of active implementation of these priorities. We will have to see what that means, but actually the European Youth Work Agenda calls for actors at European level as well as at national level to try to work towards implementing um, youth work further in Europe. Um, I will also, similar to Dragan, I will not go into detail at all into this, into the content, and I would rather encourage you to just read the, um, the declaration and maybe also read the agenda. You will find it all on the website um, if you go into European Youth Work Agenda on the internet and um, because it refers very much to all the different issues um, that um, Dragon has outlined that are um, needed for youth work development in the region but also in Europe as a whole because obviously some of the a lot of the issues that have been outlined um, in Dragon's presentation which are typical maybe for challenges that the region is facing other countries in Europe are facing as well um, most notably southern countries in Europe um, in many countries, the situation is similar. Other countries maybe face different, different types of challenges. Nevertheless, um, it's a framework that can be, can, be employ, uh, can, be, uh, can be used. It brings also forward the different priorities um, that are highlighted in the European youth programs. Um, and um, it calls basically for developing youth work, um, bringing and, and looking at where there's a need to maintain and where there's a need to develop further, to adapt practices from other countries, to share good practices, to work together with other sectors and see what benefit they can maybe bring to taking developments forward, um, and also to innovate where it's needed. Yeah. Um, in Quite some of the countries across Europe, national groups have formed, um, bringing together main stakeholders who are looking at this and trying to see, okay, what can we now do to take, take processes further in our own country? Um, and um, examples of this, I think, exist um, in, yeah, I mean, in, in um, I'm thinking even in some of the Balkan countries where these processes start. Um, I'm thinking in Serbia, for instance, I think they have they have started working on this quite actively, but also in other countries across Europe. In some countries, um, we're still waiting for inspiration um, and we're hoping that the momentum which has been created um, will help um, to give a push to developments um, yeah, in different countries. 
So the question is really, um, is there anything we can take from this for our work, for your work? Um, is there anything that happens at the European level in terms of policies, be that recommendation from the Council of, um, Council of Europe, be that resolution, um, European youth strategy developed in the EU framework, or both of this brought together in under the process of the European youth work agenda that you can use to push forward developments um, in youth work in your region. Now coming to the program, um, the project level, quite simply, um, going back to, to a little bit what I introduced last week. Um, there are different um, transnational projects that can be developed with the support of Erasmus Plus and the European Solidarity Core. Um, most of them, and this goes for youth exchanges, it goes for youth participation activities in particular, um, which are probably the opportunities that are most open at the moment um, to partners from um, neighboring partner countries. Um, encourage or are opportunities for young people, um, for young people to get involved, to take action, to get involved and learn together with other young people from other countries, to engage together in a theme of joint interest, um, or in the case of youth participation activities, to really take a role in, in leading initiatives um, that will help them to engage in societies and that will help them to, to gain spaces for participation and, and um, engagement in society. These activities are, I think, mainly creating, building skills and competences of young people. Um, and um, in that sense, um, and also will um, promote, in a way, maybe just getting to know non-formal learning activities, non-formal ways of working together with young people, uh, learning from each other in that sense, and are maybe only indirectly promoting youth work in society. What they're helping is certainly is to promote the quality of youth activities with young people and to learn from how um, organizations in other countries work with young people and to bring that back to your own environment. Mobility of youth workers more strongly helps, of course, to build the competences of trainers, of youth workers and of professionals working with young people. And um, to build the quality of youth work in that sense, um, and the quality of youth activities um, in the different countries or in, at, at, in, in the different organizations. They also help um, networking um, and community building. And um, what we said before also, um, this is maybe important also in a regional context, but also in a European context. Um, in order to bring, put capacities and competences together um, in order to push forward certain developments. At the level of um, cooperation between organizations, um, the program offers cooperation partnerships and capacity building activities. However, as we um, already said last week, only to a limited extent at the moment. Um, we're hoping that in particular capacity building activities will be introduced again next year so that they are existing to the same extent um, as they did in the old programs and also would then hopefully offer again the possibility for organizations in the Balkans to apply themselves for projects, um, which is an important aspect um, since at the moment it's only possible to be a partner in a project. Of course, those larger projects that are um, encouraging cooperation between institutions um, and um, also allow for using, um, developing more flexible project formats and um, with larger budgets, op operating with larger budgets that can be used in a more flexible way, um, can have a stronger influence um, at youth work development at a more systemic level quite likely. So we're hoping that those those um, will come back. Nevertheless, some opportunities to use them exist at the moment. And then last but not least, um, volunteering projects can be developed under the European Solidarity Corps. Um, and um, also here, um, volunteering um, and developing activities, solidarity activities in the community um, 
can strengthen organizations, can bring in new experiences, um, and also in that sense, um, strengthen organizations and thus um, providers of youth work um, at that, in, in that sense. Um, I think the questions here um, that um, we, can, we can ask in relation to youth work development are, um, if we're thinking of skills and competences that young people should develop further, um, and if we're thinking of the priorities that the programs support, which skills and competences are really important, and then accordingly, which skills and competences do youth workers need to develop in order to further develop quality youth work um, and to support and reach out to young people. Um, a lot of what the program support has to do with, with, with promoting quality. And um, only at the second, second level, I think we can ask, OK, how can international youth projects help to build the competences and skills and the quality of youth work? And then how can such projects, even if it's smaller projects, maybe nevertheless help to develop youth work at a more systemic level? How can, for example, exchanges of youth workers be used to address um, main challenges maybe that are faced, for instance, and how to address them, or what competences or what skills can be, can be, um, can be developed further, or what areas do we need to tackle, for instance, to work more, involve, for example, young people with few opportunities more in, in youth work in general, um, or what um, principles um, and values are the ones that we want to actually promote in youth work um, in order to um, give, um, maybe define more what could be the essence of youth work um, in our context, questions like this. At the third stage, um, I want to very briefly put a spotlight on um, resources that have been developed at European level and that potentially can be used for transfer and, and inspiration in the region. Um, and I would um, first of all like to focus on what is there in terms of promoting recognition of youth work and quality of youth work um, most of you i'm sure um, know about youth pass as a tool um, that um, is um, promoting learning um, and a self-assessing learning in youth projects in the context of um, the european youth programs um, youth pass has been in the past years, um, not only been used widely in the programs, but more importantly, maybe has been adapted to very different contexts um, in different ways. There are also, of course, other tools um, that exist on recognition of non-formal learning, but um, there has been a bit of um, a wave that has been created um, of different um, tools that are being used to recognize um, non-formal learning and also using YouthPath as an inspiration to develop um, recognition tools um, in, in, in different countries. So um, the question is also youth pass as a tool. Um, can you learn from that? Is that something that would develop the recognition of youth work um, also in, um, in your context and also um, assessing learning processes of young people in that context? Um, At the European level also, um, in the framework of a whole um, strategy on promoting quality um, in youth work, competence models have been developed, um, in particular by Salto Training and Cooperation. And um, I'm sure um, you have looked at one or the other of them, but also here, um, it's a competence model for youth workers and the competence model for trainers to work internationally. So these competence models, first of all, um, outline competences that youth workers or trainers need in order to work in an international context. So they're quite specific. They're also quite detailed out really outlining what um, a youth worker would need in terms of skills, in terms of attitudes, in terms of, of, of knowledge and so on. Um, and um, also for those models, it's maybe worth thinking to what extent they can inspire when you're looking at developing occupational models 
um, occupational standards um, for youth work um, in um, in your country? How can you maybe use these models as a source of in inspiration? Um, again, it has been done already, um, but maybe there's space for, for further looking at them. Um, at the European level, also the, the International Trainers Guild has developed um, a whole system of um, an assessment of a self, which allows a self-assessment of trainers for the moment um, to actually assess their own competences. Um, so to actually use this competence model in a way of, of seeing how they um, potentially um, carry out their work in accordance to the, to the standards that are set um, in, in, in this model. Um, so just as an inspiration, there's a lot of work done to think about what competences are needed um, at, in these different frameworks and that can be transferred to different contexts and used for inspiration. Um, validation um, is another topic that refers to the same context. Um, validation of, um, of um, 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 competences um, and learning. And um, there was a large, a, a, quite an interesting conference that was organized at the end of last year in November 2020, where a, really a lot of resources were developed um, related to recognition, um, current developments. <clears throat> Again, in different countries, um, you will fi also find examples from Bosnia and from Serbia there. There are a lot of, a lot of material is there from across Europe. Um, and um, the different validation tools that e exist across Europe. Um, so if you want to engage in this context or to take this process further, it's worth going to the website, the Youth Pass website, and check a bit what's there and see what, what can, can inspire um, and, and help. Um, at a more practical level, um, the European training strategy also foresees a number of training courses that are offered at European level. Um, that you can participate in that are open um, for trainers and for youth workers to develop the competences listed in these in this in, in these models. Um, and of course, in addition to that, there are there's a variety of other um, training um, offers and support offers offered at European level. Um, and I mentioned this last week um, already um, to check training opportunities to develop competences that are used in youth work, but also not only to develop your competences, but also to engage in seminars, which might allow you to um, develop um, knowledge about certain topics further, certain understandings, um, to exchange good practices and so on. Um, there are quite a lot of opportunities out there that one can engage in. So here, these tools would help to develop youth work at a more systemic level, maybe. Um, and um, Next week and also on Thursday, we will look more of this also from, from other perspectives um, and complement complement the picture. Um, Salto Southeast Europe, and this is what I will stop um, with after, or what I will end with, um, is in the first place, they are to support participants from Western Balkan partner countries in um, using um, these opportunities um, offered by, by the programs. And um, I think we can do that in different ways. And here we're at the moment, um, I take the last point maybe first, really thinking of what should be the priorities of our work for the next years. The possibilities um, that we have are um, on the one hand to support the transfer of resources that are available at EU level to the Western Balkan region. So for instance, um, if um, the issue would be to promote um, development, for instance, if the development of recognition um, of youth work or to support certain um, um, developments in, in uh, related to certain thematic areas um, or whatever it could be, um, Salto could probably help to facilitate more um, what, what is being developed in other countries, um, to see what are good examples of practice, but also what is there at the European level and how this could be um, used in a, in a regional, but also at the national context. For instance, in 2000, oh, I don't know, a few years ago, five, six years ago, 
um, we organized a regional conference on recognition where we brought together a lot of stakeholders from, from the different countries to discuss what's the state of recognition of youth work in the region. <clears throat> and there were follow-up processes in, in the different countries organized afterwards. Um, now, this is a few years back. Um, potentially, it's time for an update on what is the situation now. Um, we um, organized particular activities, um, specifically targeting partner countries, um, together with national agencies. Um, and um, we also cooperate in several longer term frameworks with national agencies that promote um, particular thematic areas such as participation or such as inclusion. Um, but for instance, we're also cooperating in the framework of putting the European Youth Work Agenda um, into practice. Um, these strategic partnerships are in the process of being developed at the moment. And um, we have also created one which particularly looks at supporting cooperation um, with neighboring partner countries. Um, I would maybe just highlight that in um, June, um, we are organizing um, a consultation process. Um, that means we will um, invite stakeholders from the different countries, um, the partner countries in particular, I mean, so the program's partner countries in the Western Balkans, um, to reflect um, with us and among themselves, first of all, what priorities they would see for youth work development in, in um, their country. And in a second step, how um, that pros, how these priorities or how these areas which they would like to do, where they see a particular need to engage in at the moment, um, where potentially support from the European level could be useful. Uh, coming back a bit to, to also Jehona's question from before and saying there's so many things we maybe need to do, we don't know where even where to start. Um, so to seeing a bit what could be the priorities at the moment that should be taken up and um, where can we benefit potentially from, from support. For instance, um, one of the priorities um, we see for the next years, which we could potentially discuss just as an example, is that there is a lot of focus now being given at the moment to supporting youth work at local level. And interestingly, a lot of resources are being made available at European level at the moment for doing this. There is a whole a long term project which has been supported now for, for several years, um, since 2016. And um, that has developed resources and um, also a charter, for instance, on local youth work um, to take further to support youth work at local level. Um, and by get, gathering good practices, by gathering um, what are the needs of the different countries and by bringing together um, the different um, elements um, that um, should be reflected in local youth work and creating support activities and all kinds of tools that could support this process at local level. Um, and just as an example, this is something we're thinking of really getting more involved in um, so that we can also maybe maybe support this process in the region. And we know that this has been taken up also by the Serbian National Agency already. The charter has been translated into Serbian already, but also into Bosnian and um, Albanian, Montenegrin. Um, we've done that already um, with the support of um, also our contact points in the region. Um, so this is just an example, but there can be many other priorities that we can address in the coming years. Um, these are our contact details. I'll just repeat them from last time. If you would like to um, hear more about our work, um, you're very welcome to um, check our Facebook page, to subscribe to the Salto newsletter, and of course, to check on our website what we're doing already. Um, and to see um, how some of the resources that have been developed already in the past years um, can um, help you to move forward. <clears throat>